So essentially, at this point, um, when we were in Rose's healing journey, she was absorbing pretty much nothing. It was all being pooed out, and her enzyme capac or pro or capacity to produce enzymes to absorb anything was very, very low. Um, and then let's go down and see what else is going on. So actually for Rose, her inflammation was pretty low, but this was because at this point we were, we'd already gone through, I think we'd been on healing journey for a couple of years actually. Um, so, you know, and, and obviously I was learning as I was going through. So this is back in the days before I actually really knew as much as I do now. <laughs> um, and of course, um, we, we were already on like gluten and dairy free diet and like the diet was really optimal. Um, but of course, you can st still see here how the, the imbalances are very stark, even after, you know, those foundations. And that's why like this layered approach is so important, because there's so many layers that we can peel back and help our kids with to help them to function in a really optimal way. Um, so, and then we go down into her, um, her gut microbiome metabolites. So her short chain fatty acids, which were all they were okay. So her acetate was on the lower end. And that is really important for GABA production, which obviously is like a calming inhibitory brain chemical. So and to increase these is very, very easy, um, just through diet. And I'll speak about it at the end. Um, and then we go into her commensals. And this is where it gets like really interesting. So you can see here, so these little black dots, really, they should all be sort of around the middle here. And they're just all over the place. You can see like none of them are really where they're supposed to be. Everything's overgrown or depleted. If you can see here, something that's really important is her bifido. Her bifido bacteria here, you can see it's below, when it says DL, it means it's below detectable levels. So she was basically not producing bifido bacteria in her gut at this point. And bifido is really, really, again, really important for creation of GABA and like you know, B vitamins in general, it helps your immune system to flourish and all of those things that we need, vitamin K production it's important for and just digestion in general. So you can see here and GABA is, again, it's a really inhibitory calming brain chemical. So at this point, when you've got this like wildly hyperactive child that can't sleep very well, you can sort of see why from a gut perspective as to why that might happen when one of the most important beneficial bacteria is not there. And then there's something else that I wanted to show you that was really significant for us in our healing journey and something huge that we discovered. And it's this bacteria here. And this is called Desulfovibrio piger. It's such a stupid name and I don't know who makes these up, but <laughs> anyway, um, hers was really high. And this, so this stool test shows you the colon because obviously it's the poo that's coming out of the colon. But there are bacteria here that will signify if there is a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Desulfovibrio is one, and Methanobrevibacter smithi is another one, another really, <laughs> really silly name that's really weird to pronounce but anyway so um disulfovibrio piger is a hydrogen sulfide producing bacteria and so what does that even mean so basically hydrogen sulfide so if we just break this down what the body is doing here is it's trying to be well as it always does it's trying to gravitate towards health so when the sulfate is low in your body and sulfate is required for every function and real like lots of it's required for detoxification and digestion so when that's low in your body and it always is in our kids because of toxicity and it's depleted by different things and then there's lots of cofactors that we need to kind of make this pathway work properly and lots of those are deficient or impaired those pathways in our kids um what the body will do to replenish sulfate to the body, it overgrows this bacteria because it's sulfate reducing and it produces hydrogen sulfide as part of its metabolism, which is actually in, when it's in excess is very unhelpful and is neurotoxic. So that's why. And the thing about this bacteria is that sulfur rich foods will feed this bacteria wildly. And this bacteria also feeds on bile. So it stops the child absorbing fat. And any time the child will eat really high sulf sulfuric foods, they almost have a reaction like they're like a sugar reaction. Because so that was the like, that was the cauliflower and the broccoli yeah. and right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so so basic and you know this isn't going to be for every child, but I do see this often on lab testing and people say, oh, but they've only eaten this, and I'm like, that's why the the mm. very individualized personalized diet is so it's so unique and it's it's so important because you know like we have to build it upon like tailor it to that person's body in that moment and what's going on